All right, hey, what's up, guys? Coach Mack, play fast football. All right, today I'm going to do a video on football terminology, why it's so hard to follow, why people, when they are starting out in the game, asking questions, why they have such a hard time with it. All right, and, and just as usual, my opinion on, on what it all really means and what it all really is. Remember to check out our sponsors at Play Fast Game Strat. There'll be a link in the description box down below that you can click on to take you directly to. GameStrat's website, all right, it's a sideline replay system we use, so if you're looking for a new sideline replay system, make sure you check out GameStrat. Difference USA, the ultimate striking machine, get thousands of reps in the offseason without needing a partner, somebody to hold a bag, without needing a medicine ball, all right, it attaches to racks in your weight room, or you can attach it to uh, some of your sleds or other things outside, so you can work on striking without needing a partner. Just Play Football is the digital playbook software that we use, I use it to diagram plays when I'm talking at webinars or going to clinics or anytime I need something drawn up digitally, that's the tool that I use. Defense Coordinator One is an in-game app that allows you to make uh, critical in-game adjustments based on live real-time data. Somebody's upstairs inputting the data, you already have information logged in. You then start spitting out your calls based on what they're calling, your personnel versus their personnel, certain calls that were good that weren't good against other things. All right, so make sure you check out Defensive Coordinator One. And as always, Dome Hats, which is a major sponsor of Play Fast Football. This is our white Play Fast Football that Dome Hats did for us. Great uh, custom online hat generator, hat builder that lets you build your own hat, design your own hat. So make sure you check out Dome Hats, www.domeheadwear.co. So when talking about football ter terminology, the first thing you have to understand, there is no glossary of identical football terms. There is no set dictionary or, or place you can go to look up exact football terms. Certain terms have different meanings in different time periods, different parts of the country, and it becomes very confusing, or it can, be, can become very confusing, which is a lot of the time when I started doing these videos, one of the reasons I did them on a whiteboard with drawings is because talking to people can get very confusing at times, and you may be arguing about the same thing, but you're calling it different terms and you're arguing about the terms when really if you drew it up, you're both talking or two or three or four people might be talking about the same thing. So I'm just going to look at a couple things that get kind of misconstrued or can get misconstrued and how really at the end of the day, they can become kind of irrelevant if everybody knows what you're talking about or if you're drawing things for people to see it makes it a lot easier to find out you're talking about the same thing. So on a board, I've got uh, an overfront 425 the way we used to play it. I've got two techniques circled. So I've got a technique that's inside eye of the tight end, a technique that's inside eye on the weak side of the guard. Okay? I call that a seven technique. I call that, uh, for me, that's a one technique. Now, people are going to call that a two eye. People are going to call that a six. They're going to call it everywhere you go or anybody you talk to, may call that something different. The fact that I call that a 7 and I call that a 1 is not wrong. It's just the way that I've learned throughout the years and it's the way that I communicate to my players, which at the end of the day is the most important. The most important thing is your coaches and your players need to know the terminology that you speak. When you go speak to other coaches, there may be a, a, a difference in your terminology and there may be a gap you have to close in your terminology so that you can have conversations with other coaches, but at the same time, it really doesn't make a difference and one is not right and one is not wrong. There is no right or wrong way to talk about certain things. If I tell my kid to play in a seven and he lines up inside eye to tight end, and you tell your kid to play in a six and he lines up inside of the tight end, at your school, you are right. At my school, I am right. There is no right or wrong answer. And People will probably argue, there will probably be comments on this, uh, on this video in the comments section to say that exactly what it is. I've been to multiple schools, talked to multiple people. Most people I've talked to have a different way of identifying techniques up front, whether they're teaching their offense or how they play their defense. People have different ways of identifying their techniques and how they do it. Okay, so one of the things that I do that I try to make as easy as possible is anything that's set up for me is an even technique. So anything that's set up for me is a two, a four, or a six. That's just the way that, that I do things. Anything that's odd for me is a shade. 
So a one, a three, a four I, which then I have to term and tell people that four I is an odd term because of the I, even though it's an even number. And again, that's how I explain it to my kids. So then I go one, three, four I, five, seven, nine. And then I go two, four, six from the guard to the tight end. Head up on the center is a zero. Okay, again, not debating with anybody in math if zero is an even odd number. Don't even know if I know the right answer. It's been so long since I've been in the classroom, and I really don't care. Head up on the center is a zero. Anything shaded on the center for me is an A shade, strong A shade, or a weak A shade. That's just the way I do it. That does not make it right. That's just the way I teach it. So when I teach it to people, if you're going to be in my system, or if you're going to learn or need to know what the techniques are, once I teach you those, you know how to put those kids in those techniques. If I get a new coach in my program and tell him to put a kid in a two, all right, or a two I, or a one, or a three, or he might put him somewhere different based on what he knows. That doesn't make it wrong. That doesn't make it, you know, the be all end all. It just makes it how you've learned and how you talk. There is no set football, all right, glossary of terms. They're all different based on when you grew up or maybe what part of the country you lived in. Okay. The next one that often gets misconstrued, or at least to me, is different, is the term robber. This is how we would play robber. So if we were going to play robber, we would play robber like this. And the version of robber that I play, we are man to man here, we are man to man with the two backers, we are man to man with the corners, alright, and the actual techniques that are being played are what I would consider robber techniques. Flat footed reads, extra in the run game, very aggressive in the run game, but for us, when we play the defense, this is going to end up in a low hole, high hole situation for us. We call the defense robber. Most people nowadays might call the defense one rat. Okay? I learn the defense as 11 robber. So just right there, you have three different versions of something. I call the defense robber. I learned it as 11 robber. Some people call the defense one rat. Now, just for the history lesson, because when I said this to people, they thought I was absolutely crazy, but a lot of the people I thought I was crazy are 10 years younger than me, so they don't necessarily understand. I learned a defense from somebody in 1997 who learned it from George Darlington, who was the secondary coach with the Nebraska Cornhusker Corn and Tom Osborne. All right, I have pictures of my, on my phone. I finally had to go back. I went to New York this past weekend to accept an award from St. John's University where I played football. And my mentor who taught me how to play uh, receiver at first and then taught me about offense and defense was a defensive coordinator at St. John's University in 1997. He's the one that taught me 11 Robert. And, 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 he, and he then, when I went home this past week, I said, do you have any pictures from your notes from the clinic where George Darlington and the University of Nebraska taught you 11 Robert. And he said, yeah, I can find him. He finally found him and he sent me the pictures from the clinic so I could send pictures to other people with it saying 11 Robert because nobody necessarily, not that they didn't believe me, but they've never heard it before. So that's where I got 11 Robert for, from. They called it 11 Robert because they loved it against 11 personnel. If you went to, in the, in the 90s with Mickey Andrews, if you went there, he called it Jet robber. And that was one of their base defenses. They called the front jet, they called the coverage robber. He called it jet robber. Well, then, if you got into Bud Foster, or later on, you know, he wasn't the only one, but a lot of teams started playing eight-man front robber. So they started playing eight-man front robber, and they were playing with kind of corners that were crazy half players, and they were playing eight-man fronts with the free safety as a robber player off of, usually back then when this was around or prevalent, it was more of a uh, 21 personnel type deal, and to pro-I it would be free safety playing a robber technique, 
off of the tight end. He had the tight end vertical. If the tight end blocked, he added himself, okay, into, into the equation to get a ninth hat somewhere in the box. All right, and then if the tight end went under or out, he would then rob. He could rob post in curl of one. Later on, he got to a point where he could rob or maybe steal a shallow or something coming from the backside. But that coverage was called robbage. Okay? This was Virginia Tech's version of robber coverage. I then later on started to hear people talk about playing robber on one half of the field and describing it to me the exact same way, essentially, that I learned how to play quarters defense. And then when I would talk quarters defense to people, they would say, no, that means a corner playing a quarter and a safety playing a quarter. And I said, no, that's not necessarily accurate or correct. It's not the way I learned quarters defense. So what, had, what has to happen is you've got to get to a point where you can talk things through and draw them out with how you do it. Because if you ask me, robber defense, I'm going to tell you how we play R11 robber defense, which other people are going to tell you it's one rat. Florida State people would tell you it's jet rub. But yet if I say robber and I don't explain to you how we play robber, you're going to think either this version of robber all right, or maybe a half the field version of robber with a two removed where you know, maybe you get a two removed out here and now maybe teams are playing it with a nickel that's outside, free safety here in a corner, and they're playing a version of what they call robber that is very similar by rule to what I would call corpse. So either way, none of it's wrong. None of it's because there is nothing in football that sits you down and says, robber coverage is this ABC. There is no test on that. There is no, you know, to be a head coach or a coordinator, there's no certification course that you have to pass that has a, you know, a vocabulary section that you have to get 100% right. Okay? They, they, it's nowhere in, in any of, of the classes that you might have to take to be a coach. The more terminology you learn and the more, the more you're able to have conversations with people to say, all right, what are you talking about? Are you talking about eight-man front robber? Or are you talking about more of a, you know, a... a Robber half field coverage? Or are you talking about carrying two to the flat? Are you talking about playing man on one? So you may have to get more involved in the conversation. Or the easiest way is when you draw something. All right, draw it up and now we can talk because now I know exactly what you're talking about. Okay, I'll give you another one. Okay, here's another one. Flood. Okay, flood. Okay. So let's just say for argument's sake on the front side, you can do whatever you want on the back side. I really don't care if you run him on post or, sorry, doesn't matter to me. But the front side, strong side, however you want to look at it, flood concept. All right, so deep route, intermediate route, flat route. Well, some people, if you talk to them and say you say the words air raid, which I've been trying to discuss with the people that are air raid people that I know, what the hell air raid even means. Because I'm not sure if anybody really knows what it means. Is it a pedagogy? Is it a belief? Is it a system of beliefs? Because if you watch football today, everybody runs mesh. Everybody's running a version of Y corner or three-man snag. Every, you know, a lot of people carry a version of Y cross. And then this Y sale, a lot of people carry as a flood concept. All right, so I think nowadays in today's game, a lot of people carry versions of everything. And, I, and this is why I start to, you know, when people get into arguments on Twitter or they get into arguments somewhere else about systems and what do you run and what you don't run. I think if you look at a lot of teams out there, I think there's a lot of teams like, for instance, if you look at Oklahoma, people are going to tell you Lincoln Riley is an air raid guy. Okay. He, he's way different than Mike Leach. So exactly what is air raid? Again, I, I'm trying to find out for myself because people ask me the question all the time because I like to use what I thought were air raid passing principles that I study, and I like to put them into my quote-unquote what people think is a spread offense, but at the same time, we run all heavy two-back gap schemes, and we run the ball more than we throw the ball. So on offense, I think everybody is doing everything to move the football score, and, and you're getting away from true system football. Now, there are still systems out there, and they all still win, and you win state titles with all of them. There's wing T teams that are straight, Wing T, Tubby Raymond, by the book, system. Then there are flex foam systems, like Paul Johnson at Georgia Tech. And if you talk to those people, all they're going to do is show you memes and gifts about Paul Johnson at Georgia Tech and him leaving and Georgia Tech, Georgia Tech with the new staff taking the first snap of, you know, of 
their spring game in a spread offense, and, and it's mocking Paul Johnson, and then they had a bad year, so all those guys send you know, gifts of Paul Johnson walking off the field saying this aged well, that went well. I don't know why you would even bother arguing that. If you're that guy and you like that system, run your system. All right, if that's a system you like, study your system, run your system. There is no answer to where, why, or how you have to play football. It, it, there is none. Okay? If you wanted to argue, you could say as a system, usually those types of systems, whether they be flex bone, option, in nature or with some wing tee flavors. If you look up in the NCAA, you'll almost always see Army, Navy, Air Force, and then some disciples, whether it used to be New Mexico or Georgia or Georgia Southern, whoever it may be, or Willie Fritz, all right, when he was at certain schools, they will always lead the nation in offense. In offensive rushing, I'm sorry. They very rarely are in the top 15 or 20 in offense because they don't throw the ball. But they always lead in rushing. Then if you go and you look at the teams that lead the nation in passing, they all seem to be air raid-ish in nature, for whatever that means. And again, these are not exact pigeonholing anybody into a corner. I'm just giving an opinion. When you look at the top passing teams in the NCAA, they all seem to be kind of air raid-ish in nature. Okay, but you look at Lincoln Riley, who was, quote, at, when he came from East Carolina, that's an air raid guy. Well, look at the things he does at Oklahoma. I don't necessarily think you could pin that as air raid. I think he has air raid principles mixed in with a lot of other run game that you would find in offenses from 30 years ago. So the deal with, even if you wanted to look at, I'll give you another version. Why cross? All right. If you ran why cross? And that guy is working there, and that guy is doing that or that, whatever you want to do, I don't care. And that guy is doing that or that, I don't care. And this guy is doing this, this, I don't care. If you were to draw up Y cross, there are other people that will tell you, yeah, that's just weak flow. That's just weak side flow. All right, so to me, where the difference in that is Y cross a weak side flood is probably in the pedagogy of how you teach it how you teach it to your quarterback. It's not necessarily the play. Some people say that's just a weak side flood. Some people say that's why cross. All right? But what we got to get past as coaches and educators, and people, you got to get past arguing about things that may not be worth arguing about. The only thing that matters is what you call something and what your coaches and players at your school understand it to be. If you have a divide in terminology between you, your coaches, and your players, that is a problem. If you have a divide in terminology with 40 people on Twitter and five coaches in a room that get together to talk ball, that's not a problem. That's just something we've got to work through. And that's something we've got to work around to get to a certain point. The only terminology that really matters is the fact that you, your staff, and your players, when you say something, I need them to know. If I have them set the scout team up and I say, hey, give me a three and a seven with a one and a five over there, I need them to know. That's all that matters. So that's what you need to keep in mind. All right? Remember... I appreciate everything you guys have done. Thanks for subscribing. Click the subscription button. Click the notification button so you know that when we do the next video. Okay. Remember to comment. Thumbs up. Thumbs down. Uh, like or dislike. Comment. I respond to almost everyone. Remember to clinic come up in January 24, 25, 26, 2020. Go to www.playfastfbclinic.com for more information. Again, everybody that's been following, I love what you do for me. Thank you for what you do for the game of football. Remember, won't play well till you play fast. I'll see you guys next time.